Now on Sunrise and streaming on CrossroadsToday.com, Biden approves another round of student debt forgiveness, this time targeted at a specific group. And a woman called 911 for help. When deputies arrive, things change. We have why a former deputy is now charged in the shooting that unfolded. The Olympic Games are just around the corner and preparations are underway. We show you how the city of Paris is preparing. And we yet again have some more showers and thunderstorms out there on our radar coming into the crossroads. Good news is we've got lots more rain chances coming our way with cooler temperatures next week. Find out how cool the weather coming up. Athlete of the Week is Generals Outfeeder Damian Whitfield. That's coming up in sports. You're watching 25 News Now Sunrise. Good morning and thank you for joining us. I'm Carolina Astrain. And I'm Parker Cox. And today it's the 19th day of July 2024. Parker, how is it looking out there? Are we going to get some of those showers you've been teasing us with all yes, week? Yes, we are. In fact, if you're tuning in with us this morning, we're going to look at that radar in just a second because right now you're looking live here in Victoria. It's another one of those warm and humid mornings. It's another average summer morning for y'all just like it has been for the last, goodness, like 8, 9, 10, 11 weeks at this point. But right now it is 78 degrees in Victoria, and Dew Point is sitting at 76 degrees, 2 degrees off that temperature, bringing you a 93% humidity. So with that humidity, you might see maybe some real light, maybe some dew on your windshield, otherwise maybe a very, very thin layer of fog, maybe some water kind of streaking through the air. But otherwise, you also might see with that humidity some rain, and looking at that radar, that's exactly what we're seeing this morning. All the rain is concentrated in the northern counties this morning, other like uh, and contrast to what we usually see, the ice water showers will be on the immediate coast, but we actually got some heavy kind of heavy shower activity this morning and also a couple thunderstorms as well because looking as we turn at the turn on the lightning, you see plenty of lightning in there as well. So we can hear plenty of rumbles of thunder, but it's going to be approaching Highway 59 here. I'm thinking in the next half hour or so, unless you're in Wharton where it is about to rain here in the next five minutes. So get those umbrellas ready for today, folks, because I do think we're going to have a couple more ice water showers as we go into the later morning hours probably coming that little cluster coming into somewhere north or eastern Victoria County, somewhere around eight, maybe, maybe a little bit before that or after that. So 730 to eight. But like I said, ice water shower activity continuing a little bit into the mid afternoon, but dying off a little bit in the later afternoon. And then maybe some more ice water shower developing overnight tonight, sometime after maybe nine or 10 tonight. But good news is no severe weather is going to be expected for today or really any time this weekend. Maybe not really expecting any next week as well, because what's coming our way is lots of rain and cooler temperatures. And we're going to take a look at that later on Sunrise. Back to Carolina. Thank you, Parker. We have an update to the cyber problem that's grounded flights across the country this morning. The disruption appears to stem from a software update pushed by cybersecurity firm CrowdStrike. It sells antivirus software to large corporations and government clients, including major global banks, healthcare, and energy companies. Computers running Microsoft Windows, a CrowdStrike client crashed. The CEO stresses the outages are not caused by security incident or cyber attack and have isolated the issue and deployed a fix. State Senator, State Senator Lois Cloakhorse expressed readiness and gratitude for her appointment to the new Senate Special Committee on Hurricane and Tropical Storm Preparedness, Recovery and Electricity. On social media, she emphasized the importance of finding answers and solutions for Texans to improve preparedness for future hurricanes. Cloakhurst stressed that as a Gulf Coast state, Texas must be prepared for inevitable future storms. The Biden administration announced an additional $1.2 billion student loan debt forgiveness for 35,000 public sector workers. That includes teachers, law enforcement officials, first responders, and nurses. That's all through the public service loan forgiveness program. This brings a total forgiveness approved for nearly 4.8 million Americans to nearly $169 billion. That's according to the White House. A procession of fire trucks and emergency vehicles left a funeral home where a former fire chief who tragically died at a Trump rally is being remembered. Corey Comparator is described as a devoted supporter of the former president and attended the rally with his wife and two daughters. Pennsylvania Governor Josh Shapiro noted that after hearing the gunshots, the 55 the 50 year old, excuse me, heroically shielded his loved ones from harm. Now to Illinois and the outrage over the shooting of a mother of two, the sheriff's deputy involved now fired and facing charges. 
This morning, prosecutors in Springfield, Illinois, have charged former sheriff's deputy Sean Grayson with murder for shooting a mother of two in her home after she called 911 for help. Requesting EMS, there's shots fired, sitting at a female shot in the head. On the night of July 6, 36 year old Sonia Massey called to report a prowler at her home. Grayson and another deputy responded to the scene where prosecutors say Grayson aggressively yelled at Massey to put down a pot of hot water. They say she put her hands in the air and said, I'm sorry, but they say Grayson shot her in the face. Prosecutors claim while the other deputy still rendered aid and stayed with Ms. Massey until medical help arrived, Grayson at no time attempted to render aid to Ms. Massey. Grayson's body camera was not turned on until after the shooting, but his partner's camera was on, and prosecutors say the footage does not support a finding that Deputy Sean Grayson was justified in his use of deadly force. We've seen too much of this, where an innocent person, unarmed, uh, who actually called for assistance, uh, was the, the target and the victim of a shooting by a police officer. And this is not, it does not reflect on all police officers. This particular sheriff's deputy um, committed a crime and he's been indicted for it appropriately so. The incident sparking immediate protests. She was a mother, she has children. That is an impact for generations. We want the community to understand that once everything is released to continue the peaceful protest and to continue to demand justice because you have that constitutional right to do that, and justice will be served for some of us. Andrea Fujii, ABC News, New York. French police started enforcing a wide security perimeter around the Sienne ahead of July 26th of the opening ceremony for the Olympics. Following an administrative background check, residents, workers, and tourists must present a QR code issued by authorities. Entry into the zone is restricted to security and rescue teams and individuals with underground parking spaces and motor vehicles are otherwise prohibited. Remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel Crossroads today. Hit the like button and click the notification bell. The time is now 637 on our Friday morning. Here's a look at what's coming up. A major airline overseeing travel for the Olympics has a special message for athletes. Plus, the RNC came to a close last night. And also coming up after the break, we'll take a look at your weather and health forecast, followed by your marine forecast. And later on Sunrise, we're going to take another look at all of that rain that is coming our way next week. Well, good morning, Crossroads. If you're tuning in with us this morning, you're looking live in Cuero, and look how cloudy it is out there this morning. Why that is, is because you've got some showers right next to you, and I've, actually, I really kind of wish I'd turn the camera just a little bit more to the east, because you could probably see all that rain activity, but it does say it is thunder, thunder and, uh, and raining right now in Cuero, but I don't know why it says. We're going to look at that radar just a second. It's still plenty warm and humid there, sitting at 78 and one degree off from your dew point, bringing you 94% humidity this morning, but like I said, looking at that radar, you see just east of Cuero, 
arroyo is right where that that little kind of cell is kind of just a couple thunder showers out there this morning but good news there's no severe weather is expected with this little kind of cluster of the thunder showers maybe if anything just come breezy winds gusting up to 35 miles an hour but other good news is pollen's gonna be nice and low all across the board today or quality that's gonna be moderate and a uv index that's gonna be very high with a few peaks of some beaming sunshine behind those partly cloudy skies and isolated showers making it not too bad of a day to get out on the water if you can dodge those showers waves are gonna be nice and smooth with light winds between five to ten knots but coming our way this weekend the rain changes pick up and we got lots of rain coming our way next week and we're going to take a look at that in just a few more moments and that's it for weather now we're going to look at sports with max our athlete of the week is generals outfielder damian whitfield whitfield has been a huge asset for the generals as they currently lead the tcl standings 25 news now sports reporter ray robinson has the story for our athlete of the week damian whitfield of the victoria generals has been the talk of the town in just his second season with the Generals, he's top three in batting leads of .342. But Whitfield still remains focused on what's important. Um, you know, I'm just trying to stay consistent on the field, uh, take care of my teammates, play the game the right way, and I feel like everything else will take care of itself after that. The Generals currently lead the TCL with a record of eight wins and three losses. Whitfield credits this feat in its team dynamic. Um, honestly, I think it's just team chemistry, man. Team chemistry, you know, we got a bunch of guys that come from a lot of different places and, you know, just getting everybody to come together with a common goal, I feel like that's what's been helping us. Whitfield made it clear he has a generous approach to every game he plays in. The mindset of every game, the main thing for me, I'm a big defensive guy, so, you know, I play center field, so I'm trying to take care of my pitchers on defense and I feel like that helps along my at-bats. Although the goal of coming back was to win the TCL, the support and love of the Victorians also played a role in his decision to return to the Generals. Uh, just, just the community, the environment, uh, you know, from the coaches to the host families, you know, they take, a, take uh, great care of us out here in Victoria and, you know, I appreciate everything that they do. Let's continue to wish Damian Whitfield and the Victoria Generals good luck this season as he is your Athlete of the Week. Thanks, Ray. This is Max Williams, 25, News Now Sports. Thank you, Max. Thank you, Ray. And we want to invite you to invite us, or, sorry, we want to invite you to check out our streaming app, Crossroads Today Plus. You can find it on your connected TV through Amazon Fire TV, Roku, Apple TV, and Android TV. Just search for Crossroads Today Plus. And now we take a look at the Republican National Convention, they accepted Donald Trump as their official nominee for president. Former President Trump formally accepting the Republican Party's nomination for president. Trump on stage for the first time since the assassination attempt in Pennsylvania. I had God on my side. Trump saying he's not supposed to be here tonight. The crowd chanting, yes, you are. I stand before you in this arena only by the grace of Almighty God. On stage with Trump, the firefighter helmet and jacket of Corey Comparator, who was killed Saturday, Trump kissing the helmet. In an age when our politics too often divide us, now is the time to remember that we are all fellow citizens. After promising unity, Trump quickly slipping into the same divisive attacks he's been giving on the campaign trail. While talking policy, Trump delivering what can be seen as a transphobic comment. We will not have men playing in women's sports. The former president making no mention of abortion rights, instead focusing on lowering the cost of energy by drilling, saying he will end the war in Ukraine and closing the border. The Republican platform promises to launch the largest deportation operation in the history of our country. With the Republican nomination now solidified, the Democratic nomination may be in question. According to two people familiar with the conversations, former House Speaker Nancy Pelosi has privately told some House Democrats she believes President Biden is more receptive to hearing calls to step aside. And those conversations could push him to make a decision soon. A top White House communications official calls a report of Biden planning to withdraw fan fiction. With the Democrats in disarray, the Republican Party uniting behind Trump. We will press forward and together we will win, win, win. All eyes now go from Milwaukee to Delaware, where President Biden is recovering from COVID. The Democratic National Convention is one month away in Chicago. Perry Russum, ABC News, Milwaukee. 
Okay, that leads us to your viewer poll. Today we want to know, did you watch any of the Republican National Convention? Okay, let's take a look. 65% of you say yes, you did tune in, and 35% of you say no, you did not. Come to CrossroadsToday.com slash vote to take part in our viewer poll. Merci beaucoup from us to you. That's one of the many messages that Delta had for members of Team USA as employees for the airline helped to send off athletes competing in next week's Summer Olympics in Paris. Delta is overseeing travel arrangements for all U.S. Olympic and Paralympic athletes. Athletes such as weightlifters, archers, and fencers receive well wishes, t-shirts, and water bottles at Hartsfield Jackson Atlanta Airport. The game's opening is just one week away. The time is now 6.44 on our Friday morning. Still to come, an agency votes to reduce the cost of calls made to certain facilities. Learn more after the break. Okay, it's time to celebrate some birthdays. Happy birthday to Chloe. Happy 13th birthday to Chloe from dad, mom, brothers, sister, grandparents, and all her family. We love you so much. Happy 13th, Chloe, and happy birthday to Aiden. We want to wish our son Aiden a happy 18th birthday. That's another big birthday. We love you from your family and your girlfriend. It might be uh, Adan. Oh, yeah, maybe. That's a cool name, too. And happy 38th birthday to Tony. We wish you have a good day. Happy birthday from your friends. Happy birthday, Tony. Happy birthday, Tony. And also happy birthday to Dr. Strange, also known as Marvel star Benedict Cumberbatch. He's turning 48 today. Happy birthday. Dr. Strange in the range and the, the realm of uh, infinite possibilities. That's what he says. <laughs> Happy birthday. And to see your birthday wish live on 25 News Now Sunrise, come to crossroadstoday.com, click on more, and under home, you'll see KVU to submit your birthday. All right, the time is now 6.46 on our Friday morning. Stay with us. That's right. We'll be right back.
Well, good morning, Crossroads. We're taking another look at all the showers and thunderstorms that are still out there in our midst of the crossroads. Yes, it is still ongoing. Coming up into Wharton County, it's actually about halfway right down the middle, coming up on Highway 59 in Wharton County. But you also got this one little heavy shower just uh, east northeast of Cuero. So if you've lived in just east of Cuero, just anywhere um, in the eastern county over there, get ready for that. But also lots of showers in Houtsville as well in Lavaca County. But oh, I think those showers will continue, unlike yesterday. Well, if you remember yesterday, there was this line that was coming all the way out of the north, and it stalled like uh, like right here, like right here, just before entering Victoria County and then the rest of the south, uh, southern crossroads. But like I said, I'm gonna get out of the way for this. Uh, the timing of this, you could see probably coming into Don Toll somewhere probably around 650 to 655, and Ezel probably around 705, somewhere around that time. Same thing, same maybe five minutes later in Kane Junction, and about 20 minutes later, or maybe actually 15 minutes after that, seven about 7:20. 25 in Ashwood, and about 725 to 730 in Louise this morning. But coming away next week, this is not going to be the, the weather pattern we've seen right now is not going to be the case. We got a big change coming away next week. What's going on is there's this upper level low that's coming out of the western coast, and that's going to be riding all the way around that high pressure ridge that's bringing the heat wave to the west coast. They're going to be in the 100 teens and 120s for air temperatures. Very scorching hot weather over there, but not for us because this low is going to be digging down deep down south into the central Great Plains by mid next week and that's going to park itself right there which is very abnormal not going to expect any kind of tropical rain but we've got plenty of regular rain to come our way for the whole week and we're going to take a look at all of that more later on sunrise back to carolina thank you parker the federal communication commission voted on a rule that cuts the cost of prison phone calls the fcc announced it will Lower rates for incarcerated people at correctional facilities following a meeting on Thursday. At large jails, 15-minute calls can cost more than $11, but the new rule will lower that to $0.90. Cents. At small jails, a 15-minute call that would cost more than $12 would be lower to $1.35. There will also be a permanent rate cap for video calls. This year's Amazon Prime Day event hit record numbers. Between July 16th and 17th, shoppers spent $14.2 billion during the online sale event. Adobe Analytics says that's an 11% boost in sales from last year. Back to school supplies, TV, electronics, and small kitchen appliances were top sellers. Amazon has not yet released its sales figures, but has said that this is the biggest Prime Day shopping event ever with more items sold than any previous Prime Day. Still to come on Sunrise, news to know before you go. The largest housing provider for unaccompanied migrant children is being sued.
breaking news for you this morning. A Russian court is set to announce the verdict for American journalist Evan Gershkovich. Today, the court heard closing arguments before the judge retired to the deliberation room. Russian State News reported the state prosecution requested 18 years in prison. Gerskovich has pled not guilty to spying. He's the first American journalist to be arrested on espionage charges in Russia since the Cold War. The Justice Department is suing the largest housing provider for unaccompanied migrant children. Southwest Key is being sued for alleged repeated harassment and sexual abuse of children in their care. Employees based in Austin have committed acts including rape, sexual touching, and solicitation of sex and nude photos from children since at least 2015. That's according to the DOJ. The lawsuit further claims that children were threatened with violence if they reported the abuse. A Louisiana father could face charges in the deadly shooting of a toddler. The child was at home with his father when he stepped into another room. The father came back to the bedroom to find the injured child. Authorities say the toddler shot himself in the face with a gun stored in between the mattress and a box spring. No charges have been filed as of yet, but the father could face negligence charges. Republican presidential candidate Donald Trump scheduled a phone call with the president of Ukraine, which would mark their first conversation since the former president left the White House. The discussion comes amidst European concerns about Trump's potential policies regarding the Ukraine conflict if he returns to the presidency. Trump previously criticized U.S. military aid to Kyiv and claimed he could resolve unrest in Eastern Europe swiftly if re-elected, though he has not outlined specific plans for doing so. The Justice Department says it needs more time to finalize a plea deal it made with plane maker Boeing earlier this month. On Thursday, the DOJ says it has been said it has been making, quote, substantial progress in finalizing the agreement. But they say officials need more time to work through some remaining details before final terms are filed with a federal court in Texas. Earlier this month, Boeing agreed to plead guilty to one charge of conspiracy to defraud the U.S. for its role in two fatal 737 MAX crashes. The calls for President Joe Biden to give up his re-election bid are growing. Many senior-ranking White House and Biden campaign officials now privately believe President Joe Biden must step aside soon. A Democratic governor in touch with party officials says, quote, the next 72 hours are big. This can't go on much longer. His campaign insists he's staying in the race and has a chance to win. At least 20 House Democrats are publicly asking Biden to step aside. As the Rio Grande runs dry, South Texas cities look for alternatives. Look to alternatives for water. You can read this story by the Texas Tribune on our website, crossroadstoday.com. And we want to invite you to experience our digital streaming service, Crossroads Today Plus. You can find it on your connected TV through Amazon Fire TV, Roku, Apple TV, Android TV. Just search for Crossroads Today Plus. And we do have time for a final check of our forecast with Parker. Parker, we have a story about a lack of water across the state. What's the water what are the water chances looking for us here in Victoria? Well, Carolina, we actually have a couple of showers out there right now as we speak, or we'll look at that radar in just a second. But right now, you're looking live here in Port Lavaca. Look at that pretty sunrise. And also, not too bad of a morning out there, sitting at 77 in Port Lavaca, but still plenty humid at sitting at that 94% right now. But like I was just saying, and Carolina was just saying, we are we do have a couple of showers here in our midst here in the crossroads. And zooming in on where all the heavy activity is, it's all right here concentrated in the northeastern part of the crossroads. But really moving kind of slow at about, about 15 to 20 miles an hour at around <clears throat> or on south southeast excuse me but as i zoom out there's also some more stuff forming up behind it so i do think the shower can shower will continue going into the later morning and into a little bit into the afternoon as well i think you know, we're going to get up to about 94 here at victoria with a couple showers in the vicinity up until the later afternoon it's going to die off with maybe some more isolated showers developing overnight but then going into next week everything changes like i said that upper level low is going to be coming off of the western coast riding all the way around that high pressure and that's going to be sending us several waves of showers and thunderstorms into the state of texas and all the way down here at the crossroads all the way through next week and our rain chances are going to be quite high we could see as high as maybe three to five inches of rain by the week is done isn't that incredible carolina i'm fascinated so we don't have any water problems here but down south they do
All right. And also I want to let y'all know before the hurricane season gets real bad, we'll let y'all know we do have a hurricane tracking guide. You can get that, uh, these, this at a few places in the crossroads. That's right. Come to our west, uh, website to find out where you can find them. <laughs> Parker, we'll see you and the forecast. Have a great night. We'll see you on 25 News Now.